Hello everyone and welcome to module 6, Hands-on Exercise. In this exercise, we'll be building an improved IoT system that contains more sensors. Remember, in module 5, we built a basic IoT system that contained one temperature sensor. This time round, we'll build an IoT system that has more sensors. Let's go ahead and look at all the requirements. What do we need to be able to do this? For this exercise, we will need these items. First, we need two temperature sensors, so we'll be using two temperature sensors. We'll need a resistor, a 4.7K resistor. Then we'll need a microcontroller, the low P4 that we've been using. We need a breadbed, a breadboard to do the connections. Of course, you need your computer or your laptop that has Visual Studio Code and PyMaker installed. Then we need jumper cables and a micro USB cable. It's very possible to connect two sensors to a microcontroller, the way you see in this image. Unfortunately, to implement this, it's a bit difficult because the pins are small in size. So to be able to force two wires, like from the two sensors, to connect into one pin, that's a bit of a challenge. And in as much as it's possible, but we wouldn't recommend that. So, so try and avoid doing this. You can try it at your own time. You'll see that it's able to work, but we don't recommend it. It's better to have a breadboard that allows you to organize your IoT system like I demonstrated during the presentation. So if you decide to do this without using a breadboard, follow the instructions, that is, do the wiring the way it's indicated here, and go ahead and move to the next slide and run it. However, for our case, we'll, we won't be doing that. Instead, we'll work with the best way that is the best practice is to use a breadboard to connect it this allows you to organize your iot systems in a more organized way like i demonstrated like in this slide for those of you that have followed the, the presentation this one demonstrates how the different sensors can be connected using the breadboard in a more organized manner like what you see so for our case here we'll be implementing this so let's go ahead and do that i will move and demonstrate to you so here like i mentioned we have the two sensors like you see the two temperature sensors that we'll be using we have the microcontroller here we have the breadboard we have a resistor it's small but you can see it. we have the resistor here that's a 4k resistor and then we have the jumper cables and we have the usb cable so let's go ahead and do the connection like I demonstrated to you. So let's follow that. So if you're successful in making the connections, you should be having something like this. So we have the microcontroller. We've used the jumper cables to connect it through the breadboard. And we've connected the sensors to the breadboard. And we've been able to follow the instructions carefully. So the next step would be to connect the USB. So I'll go ahead and connect the USB to the to my computer. So I've connected, and as usual, you have to make sure that the LED on, on the development board is blinking in blue, and the other ones are also in green and in orange. If that's the case, then we'll go ahead and start. Let's go ahead now and start the Visual Studio Code. So we followed all the steps correctly. We now need to run the IoT system. I will start my Visual Studio Code. Once you've opened Visual Studio Code, once again, ensure that the connection has been accepted, that is the terminal is reading from the same COM port that the microcontrol has been connected to. Like for my case there, you can see it's okay. And the next thing we need to do is to navigate to the folder containing the files. So I'll open and I'll move to module six folder and I'll select it and select folder. That should be able to open. before we do anything we have to upload this 
remember I mentioned to you that you have to, whenever you want to run in a computer, you have to install a software. But in microcontrollers like this one, you upload the files. So we have to upload these files so that you can execute them. So I'll go ahead to the bottom and click on upload. Of course, this will remove the previous files. So we've successfully uploaded. And next thing, we will run this file. So let's go ahead and click on run. What do you notice? At the beginning, you're able to see that there were two measurements here. And they have unique codes, as you can see here, B28, 5B, and the rest. So you see, in if you pay attention and look at it carefully, you'll realize at the center around here, around the B, it has a code, it has a, a microcontroller IDs. So, so you see for the first one, so we can see here it has a 28.5B and there's a 28EA. So that means it's coming from the two sensors. So it's taking measurements from the two sensors. Let's go back to the presentation and see. So we followed all those steps. Now let's select one of them. Let's select one of the sensors. I will demonstrate that once again. Here we have two sensors, like I mentioned, that we've connected. I will pick one and I will hold it with my arm. Yeah. And we will go back to the Visual Studio Code and see. What do you notice? The temperature measurements are not the same. One is, of course, increasing while the other one is stationary. It's 23.1 while the, the one I'm holding with my hand is 28. It's going to 29. Yeah. Okay, so try that. If you're not getting this, kindly move back, go, go back and follow the steps carefully. You should be able to take measurements from the two sensors. And that's the end of this. So we've successfully been able to build an IoT system with more than one sensor. In this case, we've used two temperature sensors. Thank you and see you in the next video.